oriental typography, so just think about, is possible, okay, for example, Arabic uh, typography and Latin one, they have the same origin, yeah. uh, as I said before. So maybe it's possible to have a connection between these two typography. But what do you think about like oriental typography and the Latin one? Maybe they, can we like uh, apply, yeah, like apply the or Western typography rules in the Oriental one? Or I, I don't think it's about applying rules. I think it's more finding finding connections rather than applying rules. I I don't know. I, mean, I, I don't know. Oriental is very wide. So let's say if you say Chinese to be just to, to take the worst case scenario, Oriental to sixty thousand characters. Um, and then you say, okay, what can we do with Chinese is similar to, to Latin. I think that's a very, I, I don't know Chinese enough to, to say that, but I think what would be interesting is to actually bring Chinese designers and, and let's say Dutch designers, so, since we're talking about Dutch designers here, or Italian designers, and say what, what are the similarities, what are the things that can be connections. Um, it's a complete different way of writing, but it's you know it's still about form. Really. So I, I, what I understand from Chinese characters is they are images, they are words actually. Every character is a word. And when we in Latin or in Arabic we write a text, actually we also read words. We don't read just every letter. So even though it's an alphabet, it's not really we don't read you know one letter at a time unless it's information. And so I think maybe there it could be a starting of a connection. But, and all letters came from images anyways, also the, 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 the Phoenician letters and, that were at the base of So it all connects at the end, we're still sort of the same species. I think there's always ways to find connections. With my knowledge, there's, there has been one uh, Latin designer, I think he's German, who lived in Japan and worked on, on this idea of creating um, Fonts specifically that are using the kanji characters. And, and, uh, like the kanji ones is like the Chinese character. Yeah, but he, he really worked, yeah, but it's, uh, yeah, yes, of course. Um, he used kanji to, to, to make, um, he also played with it by actually making letters that are either, that are Latin and kanji at the same time, or he played with the two ideas. I can't remember the name now, it's terrible. But, uh, he, he worked on, on this idea of actually showing two faces of the, of the typeface of, of, for two scripts coming together. So it's an experimental work. I don't know, I mean, I can't say it actually, but it looks nice. It's a very superficial touch because I don't know the script. Okay, uh, but where do you come from? I mean, maybe there's something you can answer. I come from like in Italy. I, born, I was born in Italy and grew up in Italy, but my parents are Chinese. Okay, so, but do you write Chinese? Can you read it? Oh, wow, well, that's a difficult It's thing. very difficult, it's actually. You have to practice a lot. Yeah. So it's, it's more like a memory. Okay, I have another like, curiosity. It's about Kashida uh, typeface. Okay, the Turkey one. Yeah. Um, if, you, if you change the point of view of your watching. You can't read it anymore. Ah, okay, you can't read it anymore. Yeah. No, it was really about creating form. It was really about thinking of it as a sculpture. You can only read it from one direction, from looking at one direction, because from the other side you couldn't. That doesn't mean that you can't do that. I, I have an example of somebody who's uh, actually built a whole bench made of, 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 uh, of one word, of uh, like two words. From one side it's one word, from the other side it's another word, and they morph them. So basically the shape changes in the middle and then but it's a bench, so you can sit on it. So it's a nice thing. But yeah, these are, you can't make a whole typeface like that. That's impossible. That's, uh, that would be very challenging. And now I will ask you more, because I, you mentioned that the first part was criticized for bringing uh, uh, Latin structures into Arabic typography. Yeah. Uh, but while I was looking at the second part of the, the, the more recent project, I, I had the impression that uh, the opposite happened, but in a very good way. So yeah. 
designers that were uh, just able to work with like one one stuff stuff that's something different <coughs> points of view and managed to have something which was completely new yeah. to the uh, Latin type design. So uh, did you uh, discuss this with the designer that you invited to the project to to see if this had any influence in the work as type designers in general? Um, in this project, I have to be, um, I have to say that there were also people that were not type designers per se. They were graphic designers, and they could do lettering as well. Mm -hmm. So they had a bit more freedom in the sense that they're not trained with this. Because I think if you're trained in a type designer, you have to, you, you have rules to learn, and it's very difficult to go against that. And somehow, as a graphic designer, you're a bit naive outside of it, you feel like you can play with it. So that was one, one thing that was a bit different. But, but the, one, the other thing that's very different in this project also is that we did the two scripts at the same time. So there was freedom. They could go either direction. And it's up to them what they decided. What was interesting is that all the, the legends and the Latin designers, they were more interested in the Arabic because it was far more flexible. And because we said it's experimental and we can, legibility is not the priority. It's more the emotional effect that you can get out of the work. Then there was no problem anymore. And they found it really more interesting. The designers that worked on the first project were a little bit jealous. Because <laughs> they didn't have as much to do in any way. But on the other hand, having said that, the first project is very widely used. So the public appreciates them and they were really well done. And they set the standards, which is not something you can, okay, they're not maybe spectacular, but they're very important. Thing, which means that 
It's also the way the letters combine cannot be, it has to be systemized. You can't be just, because then it's no longer typography. It's really yes. Thank you. You're welcome. space can in a way invite people to make a different use of those spaces. So I was wondering what are your views and what you, uh, before the lecture we were discussing that you, this is an open proposal for other people to use it and that you are hoping that we'll start something, yeah. some specific so you what are your opinion on, on this how text can be an, uh, a factor that makes a public space alive and inviting for the citizen to um, be I mean, we, we tried to test it, actually. It's, actually. it's very difficult to have an, an opinion that's, I mean, it's not a scientific, um, I, I don't have a scientific proof of anything. Um, but we tried, we, we did, at the end of the project, we did a workshop with uh, designers, local designers in in Doha, and um, we said, okay, we have the freedom to use this also and as, a, as, a, as a palette, as a, as a thing you can draw. Um, so you have to come up with something that you, you make people that use this space, which is a commercial space, but it's also a touristic space because it's kind of old, and, um, and it's a place where there's restaurants, it's a kind of social place. To, to tell the story of this soup through typography, and we're going to create three dimensional typography and somehow make people to add to it. And um, our experience was that people were very fascinated. I mean, it actually worked the way as, uh, I would think it should work, is that you create text and people come and say, they try to read it because it's text. First, they actually go on to read it. So then you have already a meaningful communication with them. Um, we had things, discussions where can you put things in public space without permission? You know, we came about something completely different. And then, uh, do you have the permission to put it here? And then we said, yeah, we have permission, which we didn't have. And then there was a policeman that decided he likes the steps in this pose, and then it became the permission, because it was an official person stepping. <laughs> so, I don't know, I, I think in a way it, it does make people, because when, when you're reading information, it, it, when you read text that is only information that's supposed to help you, which in my experience hardly ever does actually. I, I'm always lost, so I know it doesn't work. But it, it tells you you don't need to talk to people anymore because you have all the information. And sometimes if you ask people for directions and they, they say, go read the sign. So, but then if it's the sign is nothing, if there's signs that are more about people wondering what it is, then you create connections. You, you bring back that you know, human factor in, in actually wayfinding, which is what wayfinding designers try to avoid, is to have, help you not be lost without having to depend on another person. But in a way, sometimes when you depend on another person, you learn information that is far more connecting to this place rather than just going from A to B. So it's good to be lost. Most of us, <laughs> it's not good to be lost when you have to be lost. But maybe there's some information design as well. I mean, I did that also for a while. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know, did I answer your question? Probably not. No, I think so. Yeah, but I think it's, it's, it's personal. It's this idea that, you know, you're always ashamed to ask questions when there are signs that are supposed to tell you. And uh, sometimes the signs tell you things you don't want to know. You want to know something different. You want to know more. If you put them all on the sign, then the city will be covered with instructions for everything. You know, the two Thank you all for being such good listeners.